pituitary tumor arises in the pituitary gland, which sits just behind the bridge of the nose. So it sits just underneath the nerves that come back from the eyeballs. It's just a couple of centimeters behind here. A pituitary tumor can affect the body in a couple of ways. One is that as it grows, it causes pressure on the structures around it. The most noticeable of these are the nerves that come back from the eyeballs, and people tend to complain of tunnel vision. They lose their peripheral vision, so around the side of their vision gets blurry. Sometimes they even bump into things, or they notice when they're driving that they haven't spotted a car coming from one side or the other, or a bicycle that they didn't see. Their blind spot around the edges seems a bit bigger than normal. It doesn't tend to affect the clarity of vision. It's usually a tunnel vision problem, but you can get a number of different visual sort of abnormalities. The other way that it can affect the body is because the pituitary gland controls all the hormones in our body. And so you can have some pituitary tumors that cause an excess of one particular type of hormone. Now that might be the body's own natural steroids, which gives you a condition called Cushing's disease. It might be a growth hormone excess. And actually it's a cause of giants. If you have a pituitary tumor in childhood that secretes growth hormone, then you, you become a giant. Now in adulthood, we don't become giants, but you can have signs of this growth hormone excess. People describe a coarsening of their facial features or their hands and feet get bigger. So what does that come to us as? Well, people say their wedding ring doesn't fit anymore, or they've had to buy new shoes in a different size in adulthood, which is not something we associate with, with, with being an adult. You know, you, you might change your shoes, but not necessarily get a bigger pair. Um, so those are the features of a condition called acromegaly. There are a number of other more subtle hormone changes that can occur. So we tend to divide pituitary tumors into two groups, ones that are causing pressure effects, on the eyes and ones that are causing hormone problems. Sometimes you get both. There is one other way that the pituitary tumor can affect a body. And that is if you suddenly have a bleed into your tumor, you have a condition called pituitary apoplexy. And that can be very serious. It can be life-threatening. And that can present with sudden onset visual failure. So suddenly you can lose your vision or suddenly you get double vision or strange things like a droopy eyelid. Um, and it tends to be associated with a severe sudden onset headache. So apart from the apoplexy presentation, most pituitary tumors present quite slowly with a gradual deterioration in your vision or with some features of hormone excess. So a pituitary tumor um, can be serious. Any condition that affects your sight is obviously something that we take very seriously. In the case of pituitary apoplexy, as I said before, is an emergency presentation of a pituitary tumor. It's very rare. But if you do have a bleed into your tumor, that's when you might get rushed into hospital, have an emergency operation, and everything you know, moves very fast. The other ways that pituitary tumors present, how I explained earlier in terms of visual failure or hormone excess, tend to be a more gradual onset, but they can be serious. They can, it's still affecting your vision, it's still affecting your quality of life. So in, the, in that sense, pituitary tumors can be serious, but they're very safely managed. So, when we do surgery for pituitary tumors, um, these days we tend to use an instrument called an endoscope, which is a tiny camera. We operate in pairs of surgeons and we will pass a camera up one nostril and an instrument and a couple of instruments up the other nostril. So um, when you have pituitary surgery, you're asleep under general anesthetic and the two surgeons will operate up the nose. So there are no scars on the face. There's a little bit of bone at the back of the nose that's removed. And the next thing we see is the pituitary tumor. So it's actually not um, a very long operation normally. Um, and it, the patient tends to wake up 
feeling reasonably okay. People tell me that in the first few hours after surgery, they feel a little bit groggy, just like you would after any operation. Sometimes people report, report some discomfort in the nose. So you can get some crusting in the nose. It can feel difficult. Your nose can feel blocked. We use uh, absorbable packing usually, but we do place some packing up the nose. It doesn't need to be removed separately, but nevertheless, you do feel a bit blocked up. You have to breathe through your mouth for, through, for the first few hours. Um, people tend to spend a couple of days in hospital and during that time we'll be keeping a very close eye on how much urine you're producing, so how often you're going to the toilet. And why do we do that? Well, because one of the roles of the pituitary gland is to control how concentrated our urine is. And if we've lost that control, then we pass huge volumes of very, very dilute urine. And then you can get very dehydrated. So we keep a close eye on your urine output and we obviously check that your vision's okay and that you're awake and talking to us. So a couple of days in hospital and then home. I tend to tell people to take about six weeks off work before they really feel back to normal. But what are they doing in those six weeks? You know, they're pottering about at home, they're going to the shops, they, you know, they're doing normal things, but perhaps more tired than normal. It takes probably about three months to get over it properly. So there is certainly a chance that pituitary tumours can recur. When we um, treat tumours with surgery, we do our very best to take everything out. But the way that we phrase it is to say that we will remove whatever we can safely remove. Because obviously we don't want to access parts of the tumour that could put you at risk. And so it might be that a little bit of tumour is left behind or some cells of the covering of the tumour are left behind to avoid injuring those really important structures like your eye nerves or, or like the blood vessels that are around the pituitary. So if a little bit of tumour is left behind, then it can regrow. Sometimes people need further operations a few years afterwards. Sometimes people have radiotherapy to try and control the growth of that little bit that's left behind. So it does mean scans for a number of years after you've had your tr initial treatment. And then we always manage people with a group of doctors, you know, surgeons and endocrine doctors and radiotherapy doctors so that we can tailor the best management to the patient. So it might be that the future holds further surgery or radiotherapy or sometimes a medical treatment like a drug can control the, the growth of the tumour.